Hey, I'm out on a walk in the woods in this nice fall day with my trusty pal Jojo here. And I'm just thinking about protein of all things, so figured I'd do a little filming while we walk. Come along, Jojo. And, um, you know, maybe throw some things down. And if I think this is good enough, I'll share it. And if not, no big deal. Um, basically, looking all around me gave, this, gave me this idea. As you can see, in the middle of the forest, it's gorgeous here. And, hey, how you doing? Basically, plants are all around us. And that got me thinking about protein and where it comes from. Because everyone, you, you know the adage, where do you get your protein if you're vegan? Um, it's really kind of silly because animals don't make protein. So thinking that animals are the only source of protein is a little ridiculous. They don't make it. They take it from plants. So thinking about what protein is, protein is a hydrocarbon. It's an organic molecule, just like everything else that we're made of. Uh, so it's made of carbon and hydrogen. Uh, what makes it different though is the amine group. You know the term amino acid. It's because it has an NH3 at the base, amine. And the key part there is the N, the nitrogen. So protein is different than or different organic molecules because it contains nitrogen. Where does nitrogen come from? Well it starts out in the air. The majority of our atmosphere is nitrogen. Something like 60, 70%, something like that. A lot. There's a lot of nitrogen in the air. But we can't get any nitrogen from the air we breathe. We have to have it already prepackaged as amino acids. So what happens there? Bacteria, a lot of bacteria in the ground, can fix nitrogen from the air and form proteins out of it. Uh, plants can absorb these. Some plants can synthesize it directly from the air, as, as can algae. And they form the 21 amino acids that form proteins. They build them. An animal comes along, eats the plant, and repackages these. And animals have the ability to change some from one amino acid to another, but they can't make them from scratch. So keep that in mind when you hear the term essential amino acid. That means one that we can't make ourselves. But even the non-essential amino acids, we might be able to convert them from one amino acid to another in order to make them, but we cannot make them from scratch. We can't take nitrogen, say, from the atmosphere that we breathe and turn it into a ready-made protein. So in that sense, all amino acids are essential, they all need to be consumed, and they are produced by a primary food source, plants. Animals have this same problem. Whether it's an herbivore or carnivore, they don't make amino acids. They eat them from a plant or from another animal, depending on what we're talking about, and they repackage them and use them as they see fit. Uh, so, what do we get when we get our amino acids, our proteins, from plants versus animals? We get it directly from the source, so it's purer, cleaner, if you will, more efficient, because it hasn't gone through any middleman. It hasn't been used for growth, development, production of hormones, tissues, yada yada blah blah, what, what an animal will do when it eats it. If we eat it directly from the plant, we're getting newer, fresher, better amino acids without as many environmental contaminants, without animal hormones, pesticides, antibiotics, if you will, things like that. Look at those nice leaves. Um, without cholesterol or saturated fat, which some people may say those aren't a problem. I'm going to say that they are, but even if you say that they're not, we're still getting it from a primary producer, much lower on the food chain, much less bioaccumulated contamination of bad things. So, and then let's talk efficiency, resource use. Who doesn't like efficiency? I like efficiency. Um, that's one of the reasons I got a minor in economics. If you're getting it from the source and you're cutting out the middlemen, you're not wasting all that energy and all that material and all that space and all that water and all that time repackaging these proteins. You get protein from a bean, it got that plant pulled the amino acids right out of the ground from bacteria that fixed it right out of the air from nitrogen and it's going right to you. You feed it to a cow, you grow soybeans, make cattle feed, feed it to a cow, 
a lot of the energy from that is going into the cow's growth, development, etc. And you're only getting a fraction of the input back out. Much, much more wasteful, much less efficient. So, just what I was thinking about out here in the trees, all these trees around me that, even though they're getting ready to drop all their leaves and kind of go dormant for winter, they're real pretty right now though, um, they're still working hard producing amino acids for their own use. And for something like a squirrel right over there eating an acorn, the squirrel's getting those amino acids too. So plants are awesome. You should eat them. Skip the animals. No need to get your protein there. And if anyone asks you where you get your protein, tell them it's the same place they get theirs. It comes from nitrogen in the air, produced by plants. So you're just getting it more efficiently, cleaner, more directly. All right. Maybe I'll post this.